Hello again. In this lesson we're going to understand some rules of ladder language programming. Firstly, we're going to definition a project, and while doing the project, some rules of branches, networks, and crossing will be told. And finally we'll have a summary. To define our project, see this simple industrial circuit in EKTS, which is a software to test and simulate simple industrial circuits. As you see, this circuit has two parts, control, and power. Based on these four switches, the control circuit turn on this lamp and the three-phase motor. Let's test it. If the S1 switch is pressed, the voltage will reach to lamp and turn it on. Similarly, when S2 or S3 switches are pressed, the K1 contactor is powered. Then it make the three-phase motor be on. Pay attention, this control circuit can turn the lamp on but don't have enough power to start the three-phase motor, so this contactor or relay with its contacts is used. Also when S4 is pressed, each S1, S2 or S3 switch can turn both outputs on. Now, see this circuit in ePlan software. At this one, a PLC is used in the control circuit. My PLC is CPU1212C of Siemens company with this article number. As you see this model needs a 24 volt DC power supply. At this circuit, there are four switches to control two outputs. And also we have those four switches here, which are connected to PLC. This circuit has a lamp and a three-phase motor, which connected to control circuit with K1 contactor. Let I move this window. See, both of these circuits have a lamp and a three-phase motor which connected to control circuit with K1 contactor. Let I move this window again to show an advantage of PLC circuits. See these four switches wiring. As you see the wiring on the left side is a little complex than right one. So an advantage of using PLCs, is their simplicity in wiring which makes to have an easier maintain and diagnostic for future. Ok, briefly our project is to program our PLC with TIA software, to turn two outputs on, a lamp and a three phase motor, based on the right side control circuit logic. Let's start TIA software. Click on create new project. Write a name for your project. Then if you want, you can change this path address, which the project will be stored there. If you have more than one version of TIA software in your computer, here select one of them. I've just installed version 16 of TIA software. Then write your name as PLC programmer and then you can insert extra information of your project here. Finally click here to create a project. Now, in the created project, Click on configure a device to define your PLC hardware in TIA software. Here is empty, because we haven't defined any devices yet. Click on add new device. Now you see three type devices. Click on controllers and find yours. Mine is CPU 1212CDC slash DC slash DC. Then if there are more than one, we must check the article number. My CPU article number is this. 
and here is my CPU article number behind this door or here on the right side it. If you don't have any PLC, don't worry, PLC programs can be tested by TIA simulator, so you can select any type of controllers as you want. Now click on add icon. Now my CPU has been defined in TIA software. If there are another module beside your CPU, you can find it here and insert it to project. But now, I don't have another devices. So let's start to programming. This the default name of your PLC. So, here, under your PLC name, after device configuration, in programs block folder, click on OB1 block. OB1 is the main organization block to start programming and call up other programmed blocks. The default language for programming is ladder. It can be checked here. Here you can select function block or ladder language for programming. Now select LAD1. As you see, in ladder language, we have a line here, which is called power line. To have this logic in TIA, it's just need to determine when our outputs are on. When turning on conditions, are not true, outputs remain off automatically. First, I need to insert two coils or assignment instructions for my two outputs. The lamp and the three phase motor. For second output I need to create a branch. Now the question is, what address must be written here? Let me to show my PLC wiring again. See here, the lamp is connected to the PLC output with this address. Q0.1 so I must write Q0.1 address here. For second coil, my K1 contactor or relay is connected to PLC output with Q0.0 address. So I write it here. Now right click on outputs and select rename tag. Here, you can choose an appropriate tag or name for addresses or write your comment about them. For Q0.1 address, I write H1 as its tag, and signal lamp as its comment as you see in my PLC wiring. For another, I write K1 as its tag, and in the comment part, I write the contactor of the three-phase motor. Pay attention to this point. CPU just no addresses. So, tags or comments just help us to understand the program. And it's not necessary to define them in program. But, I recommend to do that. Now we need to define conditions which turn these outputs on. First condition for the lamp is, when S1 switch is pressed. So I inserted a normal open contact here as you see. Now which address I must write here. Let me show PLC wiring. The S1 switch is connected to PLC input with this address. I0.0. So I write I0.0 here, and choose S1 for its tag.
let's see what are we going to do. These are three conditions which make the lamp is turned on. And this the ladder programs we're going to write. In ladder language, there is a power line on the left, based on some conditions, the power can reach to output and turn it on. Such as industrial circuit which you can see in top of the slide. We've just written the first condition in TIA software. Another condition is when S2 and S4 switches are pressed simultaneously. Firstly we need to insert a branch in our program. Select this place and then click on this icon to open a branch. In this line, we need to normally open contacts. And then with this icon, close the opened branch. See the PLC wiring again. The S2 and S4 switches are connected to I0.1 and I0.3 addresses of PLC inputs. So I need to write these addresses and change their tags to S2 and S4. Also here is a better way to insert addresses. Come back to our defined PLC with click on this tab or click on the device configuration. Let's magnify the PLC. Here we see H1, K1, S1, and S2 tags which we have defined them before. And other PLC inputs and outputs which don't have been used yet. As you see the S4 switch is connected to fourth input with I0.3 address. So to use this address, as you see, we can select and then release it in my program. When I change its tag to S4, its tag on PLC will be changed too. Now see the third condition. It's when S3 and S4 switches are pressed simultaneously. Same as previous branch, insert the last condition. As you see, I can close this branch manually. We want to use PLC input with I0.3 address which is connected to S4 switch. Pay attention, when we have defined a tag, after that, we can use the defined tag instead address. Here we've defined I0.3 address with S4 tag. So another way to insert an address is write its tag. So here we can directly write S4. Let's define S3 tag for this address. Here, we see tags that we've defined before, and we know which inputs or outputs are not used yet. Now let's see how PLC work. These three branches, are three conditions which turn the lamp on. If each of these conditions is true, the virtual power will reach to the Q0.1 output, with H1 tag, in our program. After that, 
CPU active Q0.1 and make this 24 volt DC reach to the lamp, and turn it on. Well, we had to find a project. And after that, we've started ladder programming in TIA software. In the next video, we're going to know some rules of ladder language and complete this project.